Control flow statements are the ones which help us put some logic in our programs. In other words, control the flow or execution of a program. Again, most of the statements are similar to what you may already have seen in a C-like language. Let's start with the if statement. The if statement is quite simple. We write if, then put brackets, and inside the brackets we put a logic expression, which evaluates to a Boolean value, either true or false. Then we open a curly brace, and then close the curly brace in the next line. And inside this block of code, we write the statements which will be executed only when the logic expression evaluates to true. If it is false, then the code inside this block is not executed. Okay, so it is only executed when the logic expression evaluates to true. And you have seen this in action when we implemented the check falsy function, right? All right, that had a case of if else. So let's see that next. In the if else statement, we add an else block of code. And we can have other statements inside this block of code. So this is another block of code that we have, and the statements in this block are only executed when the logic expression evaluates to false. Okay, so if the expression is true, then the if block of code is executed. Otherwise, the else block of code is executed. Okay, so if something is true, run these set of statements. Else, run this other set of statements. Sometimes there may be more than one condition, each condition executing a different block of code. And for that, we can add another if else block of code. So after the if, we can write another logic expression or condition, which if true will execute this block of code. And we can have more than one such if elses. Okay. And finally, it ends with an else. And the else block of code will get executed when none of the above conditions are true. Okay. So we can have multiple blocks of code which will get executed if the corresponding conditional or logic expression evaluates to true. We will see an example of this in action. So don't worry if it looks a little cryptic right now. Finding a leap year is a very common example given in a programming course. So let's write a function which tells us whether a year is a leap year or not. It will be great if you can pause the video now and try to implement it yourself before proceeding. In the console, let's write a new function. Call it is leap year, which takes a year as an argument. Inside the function, we write if the year is divisible by 400, that is the remainder on division by 400 should be zero. Then the year is a leap year. So we return true. But the year can also be a leap year if it is divisible by four and not divisible by 100. So we put another condition in the else if clause where year is divisible by four, but not perfectly divisible by 100. And we return a true from here also. For all the other cases, it is not a leap year. So we put else written false. Because any year which does not fall into the above two conditions is not a leap year. Okay. Let's run this method for a couple of values to ensure that our implementation is correct. 